Hello, welcome to my channel about creating and using hand spun yarn. My name is Lisa and in today's video I'm going to talk about wool combs. I'm going to show you the wool combs that I have in my fiber studio, give you a brief demonstration how some of them are used, talk about the kind of preparation you can expect to get from wool combs, and finally I will direct you to resources that I have found very helpful as I became more proficient at wool combing. I hope you enjoy this video and if you'd like to see more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell. So here are three sets of combs that I have in my fiber studio and I'll go through them in the order that I purchased them. This first pair are made by a company called Valkyrie. And these are the Valkyrie Extra Fine. And I have to say, I purchased these without really knowing a whole lot about wool combing. And they sort of sat in my stash for a while before I had the courage to actually try using them. Of all the combs that I have, these are the ones that I use the most frequently. I find that they're very versatile. These are the Extra Fines. I've combed everything from um, CVM, Merino, alpaca to some coarser wools like Romney and Coopworth on these. These have two, this is called pitch. They've got two layers of pins here. And I bought these with this pad here. And this is a pad that you lay flat and bolt it to the surface of your workstation so that you can to make combing easier. So it sits like this, and I'll, I'll, I have some video, a demonstration on how I use these. So these are the, the most frequently used that I have. I find that they're the most versatile. They are a little bit heavy. Um, they call them mini combs, but there you can see they're quite large. So the next pair of combs that I purchased were these. These are from Riley Wood and Fiber Arts on Etsy. And I was looking for a pair of combs that were more medium and that also were a little lighter weight. And what I like about Jason's combs is that the handle is very ergonomically uh, shaped. So they're very comfortable to use. These did not come with a stand, so you have to use these completely um, handheld. I suppose you could fashion some sort of, you could, you could probably bolt it down with a clamp, but it doesn't come with a pad. These are very nice. I like these because they're, he describes them more for medium wool. They are very, very sharp. I would say of all the combs that I have, these are the sharpest. And um, I just would caution you that when you're using combs, you have to be very, very careful that you don't injure yourself. So I do like these quite a bit. I use these uh, quite often. Sometimes I'll comb my fiber with these first. This is a medium comb and then I'll comb them again with the extra fines just to get a really nice preparation. And then uh, my husband made these little leather covers for, there's a little piece of hair there, uh, or fi fiber there, but um, my husband made these. Um, I thought they were really nifty and I'm trying to get him to make them for all my, other, all my other combs as well, but they got little snaps and they store quite nicely. So here's another pair of combs that I just purchased recently. And these are the Louette Double Row Fine Combs. And what's really lovely about these combs is they're extremely lightweight. So if you have any issues with your wrists or you know any, any problems with your wrists or fingers, these are really nice. They're very lightweight. They're also very, um, they do the job, but they're not quite as, as sharp as some of the others. These combs are great for very fine fibers. So I'm gonna give a demonstration on how I use my Louette combs to comb baby alpaca. So I like, I really like these combs for fine, shorter fibers like um, Shetland, um, very, very fine Shetland, and Angora, Bunny, or 
alpaca. So I'll demonstrate how I use those. Okay, so these are the three sets of combs that I find to be quite useful and very, very portable. Now I'll show you two other pair that I have um, in my studio. These combs are from Benjamin Green Studio. I purchased these in 2014 uh, off of Etsy. What's beautiful about these combs is the way they, they, were, um, they were crafted. They're just, they have the self storage system that stores them on a shelf very securely. And they also come with these clamps. So they're really uh, a self-contained unit. You don't need anything else. So let me show you how these work. So we've got these two pins here. And here they are. Aren't they pretty? These, I would say, are my, they're, they're the thickest tines, and they're the furthest apart. And... Um, Benjamin has a YouTube video on how he uses these combs. They are very beautiful. I just find that I don't tend to use them that frequently because I don't find that they're that great for uh, very fine fibers. They're very good for um, fibers like this. So this is a this is a Romney cross. So or. Here's another example. This is a this is also a Romney cross. I've also used them for Coopworth. Um, I I didn't find them as useful for the finer fibers. As you can see, they're further apart. I'm sorry, that's my air conditioning unit going on. I hope it doesn't uh, isn't distracting. So aren't these very? They're very pretty. So I've got they come like this. And what's neat about this is, and I'll, I'll demonstrate this, but these, um, you can see they're, <laughs> they're just a little bit dusty, but they come, with their, they come with their own clamps. You can see that I haven't used these very much. I don't know if, he, if Mr. Green is still making these. I checked his Etsy shop just today, and the last pair that he sold was in 2018. So I'm sure he has updates. Um, they are very nice combs, I think, especially if you if you work with a lot of longer fibers. They're the closest that I have to um, a set that would be similar to, to English combs. Now, English combs, and I'll, I'll insert a picture here, are um, a very heavy-duty type of comb. They often come with four pitches, and they produce produce a lot of comb top in a very short amount of time. Okay. And then the last set of combs that I have are these babies from Pat Russo. Pat Russo is Robin Russo's husband, I believe. And she, um, he makes the famous St. Blaise combs, which I think are very similar to Valkyrie. Um, I've been tempted to purchase them, but I think they would be redundant in my, in my fiber stash here. So these are called peasant combs, and if you're familiar with what a hackle is, let me get rid of these here, move this over. If you're familiar with what a hackle is, that's what this reminds me of. It is not a hackle. She says that peasant combs are efficient for organizing fiber, and also spinning can be done right off the combs, if you can get your wheel close enough to the, um, the combs. These combs that I have right here are from a man that, uh, that I bought it from on Etsy. His name is Benjamin Green. And these are beautifully made two pitch combs. The tines are quite far apart, so I would consider this a combs that are appropriate for medium to coarser wools. So I'm gonna demonstrate how I comb this Romney, which it has quite dirty tips in parts. And I'm going to show you how the combs clean up a fleece like this beautifully. This fleece doesn't have very much veg matter, really none to speak of, but it is does have dirty tips. So I'm going to show you the setup here. I don't know 
I looked on his Etsy shop and I saw that he has not sold a pair of these in quite a while. And 2018 was the last time he set, sold a set. So I don't know if they're still available. And I think I misspoke before. I think these are actually the first set of combs that I bought. And then after I bought these, I got my Valkyrie Extra Fines, which are the ones I use most often. But in preparing this video, I sort of rediscovered these combs and I kind of love them. I think that they're perfect for, uh, you know, Romney, uh, Corey Dale, Border Lester. Let me see if I can get this on here first. Let's see. Yep. So it goes through here, and then that goes like this. It's so nice. Isn't that just an elegant? Righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? Okay, so these are the stationary combs. This one, and it's got a little pin. I think he was inspired by the English combs, the, the three and four pitch combs. Um, these are just really, really nice. And I'm very careful not to lose these. So what I'm aiming to create are these combed nests that when I spin, I know exactly where the tip was. This was the tip. And I spin from the tip out. I just find that it works better for me. But other people want to spin from the other end. So these are the nests that are formed from wool combs. And this is the kind of, this is just a quick skein that I had spun up. But what you have with a worsted preparation is you end up with a very smooth yarn. Uh, it's it's got a it's more dense than say a woolen yarn, and it has more shine. So it's going to bring out the shine in the fleece. So because all the locks are in one direction, it's going to enhance the sheen of the yarn. And typically people will spin with a short forward draw when they have a worsted preparation, but that's not necessarily. You can certainly spin woolen if you like. So, yeah. Really pretty, very beautiful fiber. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you create these nests here. So, I'm going to take my locks and I'm going to carefully find the tips. These tips are very easy to find since a lot of them are dirty, so they're easy to find. And I pull them out of the roving by the tips. And these combs are going to take care of all those dirty tips, as you will see. I did comb some of this fiber with my Valkyrie Extra Fines, but I actually found that these coarser combs did a quicker and a better job. It was less work on my part. This is going to um, fluff up quite a bit as I do my combing. Now, what I'm going to do next is spray a little bit of uh, oil, water, and essential oils. Just I'm just going to put it on the on the locks. I don't spray the combs, but the combs are not going to get hurt if you put a little oil on your combs. It's wood, so I don't worry about the combs getting injured or damaged or anything like that. Um, and then this this is just water. So sometimes I'll just use water. Um, but typically what I'll do is I'll squirt all this on the fiber before, before I load the combs. But I just forgot when I'm doing this here. All right, so I'm going to take my combs and I'm going to go like this, just grabbing the tips. If you can see my just the tips. Gonna flip it over. Now Benjamin Green does have a YouTube video demonstrating how to use these combs. And he does this additional step called planking, I believe it is. And planking is 
uh, you pull your roving off and then you put it back on, you relash it on. Peter Thiel talks about that in his book on combing. And I think the purpose of that is to mix the shorter fibers with the longer fibers. Uh, I don't do that with my fiber. Um, I did do it, I don't notice that much of a difference, so I don't, I don't do the planking part. Okay, you can see I have very little waste here. And I'm just gonna pull that off. And now, look how pretty that is, fluffy. I'm gonna kind of fan it up a little bit, uh, push it up a little bit here. And now I'm going to go this way. All those dirty tips are going away. And there's my waist. I'm going to put that off on the side. Now I'm going to look it over. I see there's still a little bit of dirt and a little bit of uh, fiber that has not been combed, so I'm going to do another pass. It just depends on the fiber. I do try to keep my hands out of the way of the combs. I put my hand behind my back because I, I tend to do this and you can hurt yourself. You don't want to do that. Ask me how I know. You have first aid nearby when you're working with combs. These aren't too, too sharp, but they're still quite sharp. All right, now I'm going to go and put them back on one more time and then diz it off. Just be very careful if you are putting your hands there. Take your time, go slowly. Combing is very relaxing and it creates such a beautiful preparation. And it's pretty fast. Again, there's your dirt. There's your shortcuts. This is the stuff you don't want in there. Okay, now I'm ready to diz off. So I'm going to pull it up a little bit. Make a beard. I'm going to use this stiz here. The yarn will funnel through, so you want the concave part facing the fiber. This is an old crochet hook. And now I'm going to diz. And I'm getting to the end. This is the, the cut end. I want that last. And then I go around. I got a good tip from Stephanie, Crafty Garden. What she does is she puts a little fold here at the tip. Um, you can just uh, grab it and pull it through. And so this is where I'm going to start spinning. And so now I have all these pretty, pretty nests of fiber ready for the wheel. Of all the combs that I have, these are the ones that I use the most frequently. These are Valkyrie combs. And these are the extra fine. They're two pitch. And you can see when you compare them with the Benjamin Green, they're quite a bit well, finer. The, uh, the tines are thinner, they're closer spaced, and they're very good for fine to medium fibers. I have combed coarser wools on this, but it's just a little bit more work. Um, these are great, again, for medium to coarser wools. These are very good for fine to medium to even very fine fibers. So, um, in this demonstration, I'm going to use my pad this is the pad that I purchased with the combs. I think it's an extra $20 and well worth it. These combs aren't, they call them mini combs, but they're quite hefty. And you can see mine have a little bit of a patina because of the oils that I use when I'm doing my, uh, when I'm combing my fibers. But 
they'll last a lifetime really. So what it does is it sits on your table like this. Let me raise this up a little bit. So they sit like this. And I'm going to use my clamps like before. <clears throat> now what you can do is you can pull out the the carding the, the the pad a little bit and then your combs don't get in the way of your clamps. So you can tell I'm super handy here. I'm sure there's better clamps easier to use than these, but these are fine. These are just fine. So I'm going to make sure they're nice and tight. You don't want the combs flying off your workstation while you're working. That would be really bad. Okay, so now, so there you have it. There they are, ready to, ready to go. So for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how I make these nests, which spun up into this fiber. This is a fin lamb that I spindle spun from comb nests similar to these. And you can see again that worsted preparation. Uh, worsted yarn tends to have very uh, a very smooth texture and you can really see the plies. They look like little pearls or something. You can really see the ply structure in the yarn and in a knitted swatch you'll also see better stitch definition than say a woolen yarn. This fin is absolutely wonderful to spin worsted. So here are my locks, all washed. And I'm going to give these a spritz first with my combing milk. And I don't put lecithin in here, so I do get a separation of the oil with the water, but I don't mind. And I'm just squirting it. Sometimes I put them in a pan just like before. All right, now once again, I'm going to locate my tips by, you can just see the tips, they're brown. I'm gonna pull out the locks and lash them on my comb. So I'm gonna set them down here so I can more easily spread them out. You want to have as little on the back as possible. You just want to catch the, the, the cut end on the combs. You see, I did not wash this in lock formation, but I'm having no problems finding, identifying the tip in the cut end. Though, of course, if you do wash them in lock formation, it's a lot easier probably. As I said, I don't have the, the patience for that. to pick out each lock and lay them out. It's just not going to happen. But I do admire people who do this, do, who do that. And really, if the occasional lock gets lashed on in the opposite direction, is it really going to make that much of a difference in your yarn? Probably not. So you could do this ahead of time. Just pick them all out and have them ready to go. I think that's enough to, for the demonstration here. So once again, I'm going to take my combs and I'm going to go like this, always keeping them perpendicular to the tines. Let me see if I can show you what I'm doing here, like this. So I'm doing a circular motion, and then you can flip it over, just catching the tips of the fibers. See, 
see it's fluffing up quite a bit. This makes it so much easier not having to hold that other comb. And then as you move through, now I'm getting closer and closer and closer to the tines. Starting at the tips and then going further and further and every time. And what's being left on the combs are short bits, veg matter, noils, things you don't want. You see? Junk. You don't want that in your in your yarn. All right, now I'm going to fan those up a little bit and now go this way. Now I'm getting a little static here, so I'm just going to use a little water and mist the area. Again, try to avoid doing this. I have hurt myself before. There, I just got a piece off of there. That's okay. Again, I'm getting a lot of static today with this fine fiber. Again, I'm pulling that up. And this is my waist. So, this is the result of one pass. So what I'm going to do again, I'm going to repeat the process, second time, same as the first, and I'm going to comb this again. You always want to do an even number of passes so you'll always end up with your fiber back in its original configuration onto the stationary comb. This is a cow horn diz that I got from the Lace Shepherdess on Etsy. This is the traditional material they use for dizzes. Peter Thiel has uh, instructions on how to make one in his book, his wool combing book, which is unbelievable in its detail. Tells you how to uh, make a spinning wheel there too. <laughs> So there, there's a bunch of nests here. So pretty, so fluffy. So these are my Russian paddle combs. Russian paddle combs are a very old uh, type of comb. And what I've read about it is uh, that they are used mainly for shorter stapled fibers and not very fine fibers. And you can tell that by the spacing of the teeth. They're fairly far apart. Kind of reminds me of a hackle, but I think I don't think it's exactly the same. So this is how I use my paddle combs. I use it to clean up fiber to prepare for my drum carter. So I'm going to give you a demonstration here. This black fleece here is a CVM. CVM is considered a fine wool. This particular CVM is not extremely fine. It's more on the medium side. And uh, at first I was flicking the tips to put through my drum carter, but I was injuring myself quite a bit and I found that there was lots of little tiny uh, micro veg matter in the tips. So I had this idea to use these combs to clean up the fiber to organize it prior to uh, throwing, putting it in my drum carter. So you wanna make sure these are not readily available anymore. Um, I think you can still get a similar comb. 
I think that originally they're designed so that they stack on one another like so. And then if you could get your wheel close enough to the combs, you can actually spin right off of the off of the comb. So, so what I do is I take my fiber like so. And I just lash it on. I'm not very, very particular with the direction of the lock because I'm not preparing it for worsted spinning. What I'm doing is I'm just cleaning up the fiber, getting rid of shortcuts, veg matter, noils, so that I get a nice smooth bat on my drum carter. These work very efficiently and very quickly. So I, lo I loaded up quite a bit maybe a little bit about halfway a little bit more than halfway this is the fun part here be careful you don't hurt your fingers there okay so got it loaded up here I want to take my other comb and unlike regular combs where you keep the tines perpendicular to one another with these combs you're gonna go straight down so move this over a little bit so when you do this you're going to comb um, it well i'll show you here. so you ready let me move that out of the way T what i usually do is put garbage can underneath because i do get a lot of dust and stuff that's falling out all right so there you go so you just do this you just want to step away from the combs because you don't want to hit yourself here so at the, what's happening is I took a little too big of a bite there. And let me tighten this on here. Okay. So what you're seeing is you're getting the fiber here and you're getting the fiber here as well. So you're combing both the fiber on the top comb and the bottom comb simultaneously. And it's cleaning it up quite a bit. Uh, I do sometimes use it in a traditional way if this fiber down here is not getting combed sufficiently. Okay, so it's pretty good. Try to have about equal amounts on both combs. Okay, so now I'm going to just pull it off in tufts so it'll be ready for my drum carter. So I just um, pull it off like this. So this is going to go in my drum carter here. I have trouble with these combs. This doesn't never want to stay and it's hard to get it exactly perpendicular. So <clears throat> Oh, there's still some shorter fibers here. Um, I, I'm going to continue to pull off until I start to get parts that I don't think I want in my fleece, in my bat. All right, and then this is my waist. Now I'm going to do these combs here. You can see right here along here, there's all kinds of dust because it's really cleaned up the fiber. So I take a rag and wipe it out. You can see it's very fast. And I don't know, I do this to transfer the fibers back to that comb. And again, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to pull off fiber. This created a beautiful bat, very smooth and free of any noils. And so now see I have this big cloud of fiber and it's going to go into my drum carter. This is what I would consider the waist, shorter bits, little noils. This is pretty nice. There's no veg matter here, so I might save this in my combing waist and use it for felting or something like that. Now I'm going to see if I can get a little bit more fiber off of this comb.
And I tried using these combs as a hackle and it worked pretty well. It's just you can't have anything too long on here. I think really three inches is a maximum that you'd want to put on here. And again, I'm going to pull these off. See, now it's all nice and clean and ready for my drum carter. I wanted to show you what kind of bats I'm getting from that fiber that I'm using my paddle combs to organize. So I'm getting these beautiful well-prepared bats for spinning and you can see they're just very nice open there's really no neps to speak of here they're nice and fluffy so taking that extra step of basically picking the fleece with the russian paddle combs has really produced a very nice preparation here Okay, I wanted to round out my combing video showing how I go from this, which is just a cloud of baby alpaca, to this, a little comb nest of the alpaca. So you can spin directly from this or it would be ready also to blend with other fibers. So I'm gonna use my Louette mini combs here. The other thing I have is some water. This is just plain old water with a little bit of essential oils in it. So when you comb, when you comb alpaca, you don't want to use any oils or grease. So if the original fleece doesn't have grease, you don't add grease when you're uh, working with it, either combing or carding. So what I'm going to do is show you, these are my Louette combs, they've got two pitches. So I hold my comb like so, and then what I do is I just take the cloud of fiber and I charge the combs like this. I'm not picking, first of all, you can't identify any of the locks for this because it's so super fine and fluffy. You can see all the static I'm getting already. And again, just keep, keep doing that. You don't want to get too much back here. Most of the fiber should be in the front of the combs. And I think that's probably more than enough here. You can also just kind of pull it off and put it back on. So, all right, there I am. I am ready to comb. I'm just going to give it a little squirt of water here, a little mist, because you're going to see you're going to get a lot of static. So now I'm going to take my combs and I'm going to, what I'm doing is I'm going perpendicular. My combs are always perpendicular to one another. So I just grab little bits. Um, you can also flip it over upside down. But again, you want them always to be perpendicular. You can see I got most of the fiber transferred from the one comb to this comb. So I'm going to take off my waste here. You can throw this into your felting pile or your waste pile. Put that off on the side. And now I'm going to go from this comb to this comb. And I'm going to go from the ceiling to the floor. So I'm just going to again do the same thing as before. What's lovely about these combs is they're so super lightweight. They're not too sharp. So you could easily do this while you were watching TV or doing something else. They're not dangerous. I have never hurt myself on these combs. Any little bits that you have on here that you don't want in your top, you want to make sure you catch on the combs over here. So here I'm going to keep going. This is just going to take two passes. You can see how it's basically organizing the fiber. Sometimes the fiber gets stuck at the base of the combs. I like to just pull it up a little bit makes it a little bit easier to to get off all right some waste again it's a great way to get rid of veg matter now if you have anything in here that you don't want you can you can do a quick you can do a pass and then you can put it back on remember you're just organizing the fiber okay so now i'm ready um, to take this off of the comb you could take this to your wheel your spindle and you could spin it right from the from the combs but I like to pull it off so I'm just going to lay it on my lap like so and then I'm just going to pull it off 
like so. Now, oh, I like to blend alpaca with other types of fiber, especially wool, because on its own, it's quite uh, drapey, has no memory. So sometimes I will just pull it off right from the combs and then it'll be ready for blending with wool on my drum carter. So here I have my my top. You see how fine and fly away this, this fiber is. It's really, really beautiful. And it's a very small nest, so I usually go over only a couple of fingers because it's this very small nest here. And I try to, dra maybe I draft it out a little bit. And there you have your fiber. So it's so fly away that it's, there you have your fiber. So this was the other one that I made earlier. You can see it's, I didn't put as much um, on this, this go around here. So it's so warm, I can feel it warm in my hands. Um, yeah, so that's how you comb baby alpaca with um, any combs. So I hope you enjoyed my demonstration of wool combing. As you can see, wool combing produces a beautiful fiber preparation that's very easy to spin. It produces a long continuous strand of roving where all the locks are going in the same direction and it makes for beautiful worsted spinning. If all you've ever done is spun commercially combed top, I highly recommend you getting some fiber tools and um, diving into some uh, fleece preparation. So what about you? Do you enjoy wool combing? Do you have any brands of combs that you really like? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you do a wool search on Etsy, you can find lots of makers of wool combs. I've talked about the Valkyrie, I think are the most uh, common ones that I've seen used. They're easily found, readily available, and so are the Louette mini combs. But there are other makers, and I would encourage you to check them out. Beth Smith has some good advice on buying wool combs in her Spinner's Book of Fleece. She does not recommend the Russian paddle combs, nor, nor do I, especially for a new um, wool comber. They're probably wasn't where they were an impulse buy. I don't feel like they're necessary in my, in my fiber tools, but I'm glad that I have them. And I have read that you can use them to separate dual coated fleeces and then spin the fell or the undercoat right from the combs. I'm experimenting with that and maybe in a future video I'll, I'll demonstrate how that's working out for me. But right now I just use those combs, which it just as a reminder here, it's these here. I use these as a fiber organizational tool, not to create true worsted top. I will link some resources below in my, the description box if you're interested in more information on wool combs. So the other book that I found really interesting about wool combs is this one by Peter Thiel. This is Hand Wool Combing and Spinning. Here is a book for hand spinners who aspire to a high standard of professional excellence in their work. The book rediscovers many of the old methods and applies modern technological principles to the forgotten trade of wool combing. So this book is from 1979. I got it on Amazon. It's a used book. Of course, it's out of print. But this, if you want to know about true worsted spinning and true uh, proper worsted preparation, this book is a really interesting read. Uh, what's also really, look at this, it's very charming. There he is. There's Mr. Teal spinning his, his yarn for his cardigan. got some great illustrations that goes through you know how to prepare your fiber 
how to the right way to roll a fleece. I mean, it's just full of interesting information. It gives you instructions on how to make your own wool combs, like you're going to do that maybe. Uh, he also gives you instructions on how to make a diz from a cow horn. So it's it's really a very thorough book. Oh, and here's a picture of uh, Saint Blaise. With the end of that chapter, you might feel like offering up a prayer. Spare a thought then for Bishop Blaise, patron saint of Woolcombers, and one-time bishop of Sebasta something, who in the second century suffered martyrdom by having his flesh torn off his body from wool combs. So averse your eyes. Uh, Robin Russo's wool combs are called St. Blaise for that reason. So this is a really interesting book and you can find this on Amazon um, or in a used bookstore. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is Judith Mackenzie McCune's Intentional Spinner. This book is very thorough and she does a very complete job of, of how not only to prepare your comb top but how to spin worsted. Oh yes, I wanted to mention, um, if you ask a spinner, do you prefer to spin from the tip end or the cut end of the lock? You'll hear a lot of spinners say they like to spin from the cut end. Well, in my experience, I found that it was easier to spin from the tip end. And both of these resources here, Peter Thiel and Judith McKenzie, actually advocate the other. Uh, in her book, she says to remember to keep the root and the blossom ends in order and spin from the blossom end. So she, she's saying to spin from the tip. And he says here in his book as well, when turning a sliver, either in a top or roving, it is important to arrange the fiber so that the end was, that was pulled off first will be the point where spinning will commence, so that in further attenuating the top or roving, the fiber will pull out naturally or flow in the same direction that they were drawn from the comb. Always keep in your mind's eye a stream of fiber from the sheep to the comb to the spindle in which the direction of the fiber flow does not change. I know that might be some esoteric information for those of you that uh, don't know a lot about wool combs, but I think it's really an interesting topic. I think uh, J.C. Boggs talked about in one of her ply magazines about what her worsted issue, so it's very interesting. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, I appreciate all your thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications of future videos. So from Soulful Spinning, have fun and enjoy your crafting. We'll talk to you very soon.